I uh, welcome everybody to the University of Minnesota China Center's Considering Webinar, China Webinar. I'm Joan Rosinski and I direct the China Center. I'm thrilled to welcome you to this University of Minnesota alumnus and renowned lawyer, Mr. Yinan Wang, to give a presentation today on personal information protection and data cross-border transfer in China. But I'll begin by thanking you for your support for the China Center and this webinar series. I offer a special thanks to Kai Mei and Joseph Terry for their generous support of the program, and your generosity really helps make these programs possible. We invite you to help us advance our mission by giving to the China Center, and uh, hope you'll look at for our link on the webinar inv invitation announcement or on our website. Um, please think about us as you look at your annual giving. Uh, when China's Personal Information Protection Law, PIPL, was first made law, it created new concerns about how we came to collect data and use data about students and people we interact with in our programs, both in China and abroad. Today's speaker, Yinan Wang, will discuss personal information and protection and data cross-border transfer in China and how it affects uh, everyone's business, um, both there and, and in other countries. Mr. Wang is a senior partner of a leading PRC firm, the Hong Law Offices in Beijing. Ian is, has been recommended in the Legal 500 Asia Pacific 2024 for data, practice, data Protection, 2022 ACE Legal Tech Awards, Top 15 Legal Tech Lawyers, China Law and Practice Awards, 20, 2022 uh, Cybersecurity Lawyer of the Year nominee. At the end of the program, Inan will answer the questions that you submit through Q&A function at the bottom of your screen. Welcome, Inan. I'm so glad that we met in Beijing and I had a chance to invite you to do this. So looking forward to this program and um, thank you for doing this. Welcome. Hi, uh, Joanne, and uh, hi, everybody. And uh, thank you so much for having me here. Um, I, I'm actually, I'm, I'm so excited and uh, um, to share this topic with you and because this is what I do um, here in China, and uh, you know the, and I have been invited to um, um, to uh, to give the presentation on this topic uh, 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 recently, and uh, uh, this is a, uh, this topic kind of particularly the data cross border transfer uh, is uh, is is pretty hard uh, in China, and you know, and also at this timing, and uh, um, it's. Um, it's, uh, it will be um, very meaningful to share this topic because uh, uh, China data protection law um, was issued uh, two years ago and uh, is uh, um, um, this uh, last month was uh, a two years anniversary of uh, the um, the uh, the implementation of the uh, PIPL and also and uh, the last year's uh, September first. Uh, was uh, data data cross border transfer method uh, was uh, was coming in place and uh, uh, in this year and uh, the the government has been implement uh, some methods and uh, uh, to regulate uh, the data has been uh, transferred outside of China uh, for this whole year and there are, there are a lot of activities uh, lot, uh, going on uh, here in China and. Uh, and a lot of people are very interested. Want to uh, want to hear that you know what's going on and uh, how to uh, recap um, the, the the development of this this uh, this area. So I've, today I'm gonna uh, first uh, give give everybody a, a brief introduction of a PIPL. Then we're gonna uh, uh, get you know talk a lot more about a data cross border transfer. And first, I want to give you a, uh, you know, people a, a quick, you know, the uh, summary of, uh, you know, the data protection, uh, data information protection law development development around the world, because this is a, um, a you know, the very new topic, you know, so while I was in uh, law school, ten, uh, you know, the twenty years ago, I, I did not, there was no. Um, you know, the, um, such class, uh, you know, taught on the uh, in school, and uh, it, it, this uh, this uh, um, legislation was really has uh, been um, uh, coming into place in the recent in the recent uh, 
five or six years, you know, the, as you can see that um, in the 2005 and uh, Japan and, and uh, 2011 and Korea, Korea and uh, uh, implement their uh, uh, personal information protection law. And uh, in the uh, 2018 and Europe um, the, uh, issued uh, is, a, is, a, is a landmark is a, uh, I'm sorry, the, the milestone uh, uh, legislation, which is called a general data protection regu regulation. And because um, this is uh, this regulation um, is a uh, uh, is a comprehensive and also with a very uh, high a uh, standard uh, is really um, uh, is regulation also is covers all the EU um, country. Therefore, um, this really uh, this uh, GDPR really uh, reads the 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 bar. Uh, for the um, personal data information protection uh, uh, protection around the world, and uh, and in 2000, uh, 2020, U.S. and I think that is was the first uh, the uh, the state in the United States that issued uh, uh, this sort of kind of uh, um, personal information protection, but it's really focused on the consumer uh, information instead of, uh, you know, for example, uh, we, when we are looking at it uh, from the company perspective, it's really focused on the consumer instead of uh, uh, focus on their, um, their employee or their supplier's employee, and et cetera. And, but uh, this is one of the first, uh, I think it's the first, uh, uh, states issued this law, and um, also the, the the importance of this uh, act is uh, is because it is uh, uh, in California and the uh, this state, you know, as a, as as everybody know that it is has a lot of high tech companies, uh, therefore it is, has a um, uh, uh, play a, a important role. And but I think today probably as I, far as I know there are about six or, or more states has been uh, issued their own uh, personal uh, data protection uh, legislation. But uh, so far there was no uh, uh, no such of legislation on the federal level. So this is the United States. And uh, as I said two years ago and November first. Uh, the China uh, issued their first, very first um, uh, legislation called a uh, Personal Information Protection Law (PIPL). If I talking about a PIPL today, I will refer um, this uh, this piece of uh, legislation. And uh, because this is the first one, and also this law um, um, uh, follow a lot of. Uh, um uh the, the 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 principle and because you know um china is a uh, is a huge country and with a lot of a huge population and also the the technology and and also particularly the uh, uh the, the internet uh companies has been uh has been developed so fast and therefore and that uh, People can imagine that uh, uh, this uh, PIPL uh, has a uh, um, has huge impact on on either uh, on either the, the uh, China itself or on around the world. Even though it's come very uh, comparably speaking, is come um, this PIPL came a little bit late, but uh, and is uh, adopt a lot of uh, uh, in uh, the the. the theory and adopt a lot of the method from other jurisdictions and uh, particularly particularly the EU one the GDPR and uh, which means that uh, you know if 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 you know around the world as I as as, as I um understand that uh, there are uh, three uh, major uh, area around the world that uh, has um, most uh, uh uh has has most uh, uh activities in the um you know either the internet development and the consumer um 
consumer activities and uh, EU, US, and China. So uh, at, at that time and, uh, and two years ago, and it, it's, it's, uh, um, it's up to China to decide whether they will follow the EU uh, path or the US path. You know, the in US is uh, uh, has a, a little bit lower um, a standard for protection of uh, personal information. And uh, I think the, 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 uh, the, 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 uh, the rationale behind that was that uh, to encourage to encourage the development of the um, the, inter uh, the 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 uh, internet companies, and but the EU one has a lot higher standards, so China PIPL follow a lot of the uh, EU uh, path. And before we um, I, you know before I int introduce the uh, uh, you know um, PIPLs the contents, I, I want to uh, share with you the the, the definition of the. Uh, personal information under the PIPL. Well, this is a uh, uh, this definition has a uh, uh, is, has a lot of similarity with the uh, uh, GDPR ones, and this is a very uh, I think that this is, is, is very important because uh, even nowadays you know the um, uh, even though you know the, this law has been in in, uh, in place for two years even for even for GDPR has been in in place for 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 a lot of couple of years. And uh, this definition has a lot of uh, uh, room for, for for interpretation and uh, and uh, even in, in even in practice and also in the uh, academic uh, uh, area. And uh, I'm gonna read I'm gonna read uh, the, the definition. This is a um, original uh, language in the PIPL, um, which which says that. Um, any kind of information relating to a uh, identified or identifiable national natural person, either electronically or otherwise recording recording. So, uh, I, you know, I, I encourage the audience to uh, to read this definition. Uh, yourself and try to understand, um, you know, uh, what that means, um, uh, you know, the, yeah, and, uh, you know, try to put uh, um, some examples, you know, the, what do you think that, uh, you know, the personal information are, and by, 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 by applying this definition. And I, you know, the, I think is, I, I highlighted the, the the key uh, the key words identified and identifiable and the last um the part of this definition is uh, either electronically or otherwise recorded and uh, that really um expanded expanded the um the the scope and because you know so that's um that covers uh almost uh, everything you know particularly uh, you know, the electronically, you know, in nowadays, you know, the almost, uh, you know, we are using the uh, uh, computer and uh, use, uh, using the, 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 the cell phone. And uh, so um, almost everything, uh, you know, the, are stored electronically. And, uh, but for identified or identifiable, what that really means, you know, and I could break down. Identifiable means that, you know, the, I think that it is, um, is uh, I think it's the easy part, you know, the, the examples are, you know, the, uh, our name, the address, and the telephone, you know, the ID number, and the email address, et cetera, et cetera. You know, as long as, as, long as you know, this information itself or uh, collectively, and uh, if when we're using this information, um, the, will help us to identify um, one uh, specific person, then this information will be deemed as a, a personal information. You know, for example, myself, you know, my name Ian, Ian Wang, and uh, and if you know my email address, my phone number, and uh, you know the and the, you know the when you walk on the street and pick up a a, a, a a name card, and you will. My, my name card, you will you will be able to find me because this this con, uh, uh, content uh, um, 
uh, contain uh, information which are identifiable. And, uh, but uh, what are identif identified? And identified means that, uh, and if you know me, you know, if you know my name and, uh, you know, if you, um, uh, you know, the, today you saw my picture and so, and uh, then, you know, anything related to me, you know, for example, um, my, um, my uh, video today and my voice and uh, even uh, uh, my dress, you know, the, and, you know, the, uh, this example I give you the, on the screen and a travel track, expensive list, and a, a, you know, you know, air history. And, uh, uh, you know, even though, you know, the, when I um, uh, access the internet and uh, my uh, uh, the history, uh, uh, browsing history, you know, the, my, 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 you know, where I go to a restaurant and uh, the, the, the mail I order, this is my, all my, um, uh, my personal information because you know the the, um, the 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 condition or the precondition that is you know the identity of myself has to be identified. Then you know the uh, anything related to uh, and any information related to me uh, you know the, uh, are deemed as my uh, personal information. So the second part, identify the information, I really um, and uh, I really are. Uh, 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 expanded the, the scope, um, then the, the people, ordinary people think, you know, the what the information, personal information are. And actually in China, when the uh, government want to enforce the PIPL, particularly, you know, the, they want to make sure that the, 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 the mobile application, you know, that they don't want mobile, you know, everybody know that, you know, mobile application collects the information more than we thought. And, uh, and without our knowing, and uh, when when the when the gar Chinese government want to enforce this uh, uh, the law that they will deem that you know the, a very long list you know the actually um, uh, in my practice uh, 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 you know the, the um, we uh, you know the um, saw that list you know the government uh, uh, you know uh, one uh, one application probably uh, uh, collect more than, you know, the um, 20 and the 30, uh, probably even more, uh, you know, the piece of your information, you know, um, you, you know, the, 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 uh, your, your location and your browsing history and uh, uh, the, 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 um, the uh, 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 number, uh, the serial number of your cell phone and et cetera, et cetera. So that's uh, the, in summary, the personal information under this definition is much broader than you thought. Okay, then uh, PIPL has a, uh, um, PIPL has uh, um, the uh, extra uh, territorial reach, and uh, which means that it, this is a really um, a very similar uh, 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 provision. Um, with uh, GDPR, you know, which means that you know if you um, if you um, you know the processing uh, the per personal information, you know the, the Chinese people's personal information outside China, you know, and uh, let's assume that you know you process the person uh, Chinese students' uh, information in 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 in, in, in China Center. Let's assume that China Center process. Um, Chinese people's information, and uh, um, as long as you the proper is provided the product or services to this uh, this this person a person a natural person, or you know the uh, you analyze or evaluate this behavior of this person a uh, uh, natural person, you will be subject to a uh, PIPL. Uh, you will be um, uh, you know the. Uh, you know, even though you are physically located outside China, but uh, PRP applies to you. So that's uh, um, that's uh, you know it's a very important uh, um, uh, provision for, for for the people outside China uh, to, uh, to know. And also, that's important. Uh, uh, that's very important. Um, um, is is called a legal basis for handling or processing. 
and uh, because you know the uh, as long as you process you know or handling what what that process or handling means which means that the so, you know the, when you collect when you store when you um, analyze when, when you um uh you know the uh transfer within the, 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 the your, your your company or you're uh, providing the, this information to a third party when you delete when you're making it public anything you know the uh related to the, the activities will be deemed as a, will be deemed as a processing or handling uh, will be deemed as a, a process and handling and um, so before you do that the, the, the PIPL require you to uh, PIPL require to to to, to uh, satisfy the legal basis this is uh, uh, you know the, the, the first step before you uh, 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 required for you to uh, making any uh, activities on this personal information either you get consent you know the, you know the, from this person uh, natural person or if you cannot get a consent there are uh, uh, from the second uh, you know the contract HR um, administration to the bottom public information you know you either get a consent or you you need to um, fall into one of the one of the uh, five you know the remaining um, uh, categories on my list you know which means that either you you know the if you're not able to uh, get a consent from a natural person um so the PIP will allow you to to process this information as long as you you know either um you know to for for the purpose of uh, is for the purpose of of necess uh, for the necess necessity for concluding concluding or performing a contract with this uh, this natural person um uh, for implementing uh in HR um purpose purpose or you um perform a statutory duty obligations for example you know the if um if I'm police officer I need to make um uh, uh, you know if uh, people uh, file com file a, a, a report and uh, for, and uh, so I need to conduct the background if, uh, information check this is uh, as a police officer. I'm uh, performing my uh, statutory uh, obligation, or a public health emergency. You know the let's say the COVID nineteen and uh, and uh, you know the uh, you know the some uh, uh, medical uh, uh, staff need to uh, to collect or to analyze. Uh, the uh, the natural person's information or for the public interests, you know, so for example, you know, the news report and but uh, it, it requires that it has to be a reasonable uh, scope and the public information, you know, which means that uh, if the information has already been um uh to make available in the past, for example, you know, the my uh my picture today, you know, the uh, while I'm making this uh, uh webinar. Uh, my information already been uh, uh, making available to the public, so uh, and uh, people are able to process this, this image of myself without getting without getting my consent. So this is a legal basis. So all the all the um, process uh, personal information processor should be aware of that you know should be um, you know the. Uh, make sure that you are you are satisfied these uh, uh, these legal basis, and it's uh, obligations. I'm gonna quick. I'm gonna give you a quick um intro introduce that you know the uh, the PRPL um uh, impose some uh, some obligations on these all the uh, processors um the uh, processor. Oh, I will say that uh, um the uh, person information handler. And the first is a notification. You know, the before you get a consent, you need to uh, get a informed consent, which means that uh, 
and you need to provide them a notification. You know, you you're going to share with them that uh, you know how who's going to um, uh, process their infor uh, information and uh, what's the purpose and uh, the way and uh, the procedure. And uh, in our daily life, that uh, you know, the example uh, is would be that uh, you know the one we use. You know, we would download a, a mobile app and. Uh, uh, the first thing before we, uh, after we uh, install that uh, mobile app on our cell phone, the first thing that we, we will see that is uh, privacy policy. So this is a uh, uh, really a uh, uh, vehicle to convene the, 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 the notification information. And also, you know, the, for for some high, uh, there, are, there are about five or six um, uh, uh, high risk activities and the PRP will require you to conduct the uh, uh, the personal information impact assessment before you do that, um, and also you know for for um, for some huge um, for for some platform for some companies you know that if you process a, um, uh, the uh, the large amount of personal information, they require you to appoint the uh, data protection officers, and also for the uh, as I said, uh, you know the extra uh, territory reach. You know that if the company uh, fall into that, uh, uh, you know the uh, cloth, you uh, require to uh, appoint a representative, uh, a representative in, in China. And uh, the 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 last one that is, uh, you know, the this is applied to almost the, all the, all the uh, the. Data handler that is, uh, they require you to take some uh, organizational and te technical uh, methods. You know, for uh, for example, to uh, ask you to implement uh, the internal management method and all op uh, operational rules, and uh, all you uh, to classify your personal information. For example, there are. There are uh, regulator personal information. There are sensitive personal information. Which what what are sensitive personal information means? Which means that, uh, uh, for example, um, my my bank account. You know, so my um, uh, my bio bio information. My, my like like my uh, fingerprint. Uh, you know, the uh, my my image. You know, this is a uh, sensitive information, and uh, also. Uh, you need to adopt some uh, uh, the de identification uh, in a security method, and also set up uh, uh, some access uh, access limit. You know you, you cannot uh, you know open uh, the access to all the employees of your company. Um, you know the, and also you 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 conduct some trainings, and uh, you know the also you know if there is a data breach, uh, you need uh, uh, making uh, reports, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And um, for the penalty and enforcement, for the penalty enforcement, that's uh, uh, that's people. Uh, you know, the uh, normally, you know, the uh, China and uh, and the China's uh, legislation. Uh, you know, the uh, we do not see uh, such uh, uh, comprehensive and very uh, uh, strict. Uh, Penalty and enforcements a lot. You know the you know there are several ones. Is a call. one is administrative penalties, which means that uh, you know the is you know the the, the enforcement agents agency will be able to impose a fine on the violators. You know there are two um um there are two layer. You know the four. Uh, but uh, but I uh, uh, just list the, the, the grave violations. If you are uh, 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 violate you know the personal information, you know who are uh, reach certain threshold, or you know that there are very severe violations, you will be able to get uh, um, you know the fine as far as uh, uh, as high as uh, 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 fifty million. You know which. Is kind of uh, the equivalent of the uh, seven seven million U.S. dollar, or five percent of a previous year's annual uh, annual revenue. That is uh, 
uh, that's that that is a huge thing because uh, for some uh, uh, big companies, you know, so five uh, percent of uh, uh, you know the annual revenue to me is a lot, and uh, uh, this is even higher than uh, what GDPR requires. I think that GDPR uh, requires um, um, the the threat, uh, the, 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 the 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 cap will be the three uh, percent as I as I uh, as I call, and also uh, for the um, the individuals, you know, the, the management officers, and uh, could be um, um, fine can could uh, can reach to the uh, one million uh, RMB, and which equivalent of the around the um, uh, hundred fifty uh, fifty thousand US dollar. So um, this really uh, reflect reflect the. The seriousness, you know, the government want to take uh, uh, when protecting um, the personal information, and uh, also, you know, the people can uh, bring uh, private actions in a lawsuit against the, um, the, the, the 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 handlers who are uh, mishandling their uh, personal information. Um, the 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 you the um. Uh, interesting part of this um, the, is that uh, this PIPL shift the burden uh, uh, from the plaintiff to the defendant um, to prove that they are not at fault. What that is, which means that you know, for a company who uh, um, you know the uh, who are handling the personal information. And then was sued in the court, and uh, the 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 natural person, you know, the as long as natural person can approve can prove that you know the their personal information has been mishandled, you know, for example, has been misused. Uh, as long as they can show that, for example, if I walk out of, outside of uh, um, the the uh, let's say the uh, uh, work outside of uh, a bank, and I provided the certain information to this bank um, exclusively, and while walk out um, the door of this bank, then I suddenly I receive a phone call and uh, uh, another another uh, 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 advertisers and wanna uh, sell certain financial product to me, and uh, um, then. You know the that uh, uh, advertiser um, knows that you know we can we can we, we can um, which imply that and uh, which that that advertiser must get some information from the bank otherwise they will not have been able to know that I'm interested in this this kind of financial product so as long as I can prove that uh, you know there there is a the the Bank is probably the only uh, uh, resource that the advertiser gets this information. Um, then I can bring the, the bank to the court, and uh, then it's up to the bank to prove that uh, you know, the, you know, they have nothing to relate to to this uh, information uh, breach, and uh, so uh, the burden of proof is very high, and they need to prove, to show to the court that uh, you know the they. What kind of the protection method they uh, they have, and and uh, how they're gonna uh, follow that procedures, and uh, then to prove you know the their case. Uh, so really, they really um, um, provide provide a lot of the convenience for the uh, the natural person. And the third one uh, that is a public interest actions. It's it's kind of like you know in China we don't have a class action in the U.S. But uh, um, the, the 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 if we want to draw the analogy that is uh, um yeah you you can see uh, in from that perspective which it, it means that uh, you know the if the individual if they want because they are vulnerable and they are 
uh, they don't have e enough resource and uh, and uh, to uh, uh, to enforce their uh, the the rights and therefore the PIP uh, allows a third party organization like uh, you know the, like a prosecutor general office and uh, like uh, consumer organizations or other organization uh, designated by the regulators and uh, they can uh, bring these kind of uh, actions against the, the candidates on their uh, on all the um, natural person's behalf. So that is uh, um, um, that has a huge impact on the, the, the big companies. And um, so, and uh, the last one is the public security administration and the criminal uh, uh, punish uh, uh, penalties. Uh, they already been um, this kind of um, the, the the requirement already been written in the well, criminal law. So uh, I'm not getting that into detail, but uh, um, there's uh, um, but uh, you know the, they are also one of the uh, enforcement penalty for the for the uh, PIPL. So um, as you can see that, you know, the PIPL really provide a comprehensive and uh, high standard enforcement. Um, so this, which, which, which um, equipped, equipped with the PIPL are really uh, teeth and, uh, you know, the, um, and which means that the, um, Companies after the implement uh, the issuing of the PIPL in China, a lot of big companies uh, really take that very serious and uh, and start to uh, making a lot of uh, uh, corrections and uh, and also uh, the the enforcement uh, from the governments uh, from the regulators uh, 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 you know are getting uh, uh, more and more uh, frequent and. Uh, then, then let, let, let us to, um, to talk about the uh, data cross-border transfer. I think the data cross-border transfer, um, uh, I think that uh, uh, for uh, a very important uh, um, for all the foreign, uh, uh, foreign operators um, uh, uh, doing business within China, because you know, inevitably they want to transfer some certain data outside China. You know, uh, even you know, all their customers or their or even their employees, and uh, also uh, for also um, important for some uh, Chinese companies, which um, which has a lot of uh, um, international business like uh, e-commerce. Like airline um, uh, industry uh, and uh, also like a, a tourism industry, etc. So PIPL um, uh, require re, uh, provide a three or, or four or three um, paths or, or, or you know the um, for the information to be transferred, first information to be transferred outside China. The first one is certification. You know, if you want to transfer personal information outside China, um, you either go through one of these uh, paths. One is uh, certification, which means that uh, let's assume that uh, you are, uh, let's assume your universities and you're going to transfer a um, lot of personal information um, um, uh, on a daily basis and in, in and out, and also transfer to your other branches. You, know, you probably have branches uh, in several jurisdictions. And uh, you, uh, uh, you can do this, uh, you, can apply, you, you can apply for, uh, you know, the, uh, there will be a special institution which can conduct uh, the, the inspection and uh, um, to your, uh, to the transfer, you know, for, uh, what we call it exporter, and also we will um, evaluate the uh, data recipients. You know the, you know the, for example, you know in the United States, 
um, which is the headquarter, and they receive the, uh, uh, the personal data um, from China. They will looking uh, look at whether you're taking uh, the, you you have the um, the mechanism. You have uh, take a lot of the take a lot of a method to protect this uh, personal information. And uh, as long as you pass their test, and uh, you will get a certification. And and which um, uh, allow you to trans uh, continue to transfer uh, that information outside China. And uh, but uh, you will be subject to the um, the con uh, uh, constant uh, or the um, post uh, um, uh, what we we call it the supervision. And uh, you know the if you uh, you know the, if the method and uh, you know has been um, you know been not in, um, taken in place, they will revoke their certification. So this is a, one of the uh, path. Uh, another one we call it uh, the security assessment. This is, um, as, I, as I said in the very beginning, uh, this is a security assessment that was a legislation implemented in last September, um, which means that if you reach to the certain threshold, um, if you uh, 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 transfer, a huge amount of uh, personal information, and uh, you will be uh, uh, required to uh, pass that uh, security assessment assessment at the regulator before you're allowed to transfer uh, any personal information outside China. Um, this uh, assessment ha has been um, in place, uh, uh, implemented for uh, for about uh, for more than a year, and uh, uh, a lot of uh, big companies uh, file for this assessment, and, uh, and uh, there are. Uh, this is a uh, when we're looking back, this uh, uh, procedure per procedures um, is uh, is time consuming, and uh, and also is uh, has a very high standard. And taking about a month to prepare, and uh, and before they get the approval, and um, myself, you know, uh, I I I I has um I have been uh, assist a lot of companies um to uh, to conduct this assessment. One of uh, uh, one of my uh uh you know the one of my client is a is a is a joint venture company. Um, uh, between the Chinese uh, joint venture company, uh, uh, between the Chinese uh, uh, company and the, the uh, U.S. company called uh, the American Express, they um, they have a joint venture company uh, in China to providing um, the 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 the, the uh, credit card the, the car payment payment clearance uh, services, and uh, so when the when the uh, consumer um, using the, the, the American Express cards in China, they need to transfer the, their information back to the US for the processing. And so we have been successfully helping them to uh, get approval uh, uh, for, for the security assessment. And uh, for the, the third um, uh, part is uh, standard contract clauses, we call it SCC. And this is uh, um, this applied to the personal information, and the volume of personal information has not reached to the uh, the, the the threshold for the security assessment. So anything below that threshold uh, goes into the standard contract clause, which means that uh, you don't have to uh, take uh, um, 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 take the time and uh, energy to do to do this filing uh, to do the this. Uh, um, to uh, the assessment, uh, you as as long as uh, exporter and the importer sign a, a standard contract clause uh, with a, a draft data prepared by the regulators. As long as you just sign it, then uh, after the the, the 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 execution of the, this uh, contract, you are able to transfer the personal information outside China. So this is a very uh, straightforward and uh, convenient way to do that. 
um, to do the transfer. But after the, 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 the execution, uh, you are required to make the filing with the regulator. There, are, uh, there are, uh, the third one is a catch, catch all clause. You know, the as long as regulators are, are making the uh, fourth um, uh, pass, you are able to do that. And um, um, the, this is uh, the whole uh, the landscape of the data cross border transfer regulation in China. And but uh, um, uh, maybe some people has been uh, following the development of this uh, uh, legislation. The um, September September twenty eighth, the regulator issue a draft new regulation, and uh, and the lower the standard, lower the standard um, um, for this transfer, which means that uh, you know the, which means that uh, um, uh, the the lot of a uh, lot of uh, uh, companies which used to used to uh, apply for the security assessment has been examined for the security exam uh, security assessment um making um yeah uh, i'm going to i'm going to give you the detail of the applications of the security assessment you know from the left to the right and uh, if you want to uh, ask for the, the personal information and the first, you know, you will look at uh, you know whether you're going to trans uh, transfer the important data, and uh, you know we you know which is the uh, imp important data has their own definition uh, to um e e you know to you know quick re um uh, um summary that is you know as long as the information is uh, um is sensitive and uh, you know has a lot of the national security implementation of in involve that data. We call it, uh, you know, putting that category. And if you transfer important data outside China, you will, um, you will mandatorily go through the security assessment. But if you transfer personal information, you, you will see that whether you fall into the, uh, in the weather, we, we were looking at this two, taking this two step uh, analysis. First, we we'll look at the exporter. If the exporter is a, a CIIO, the Critical information infrastructure operators. You know, if, for example, if you are, um, if you are, um, the the banks, um, or if uh, you know, if you are a post, you know, a post office, you know, the you are deemed as a CIO. You and uh, your, um, because of uh, you know who you are. And if you transfer any personal information, no matter how many, you will be subject to the security assessment. Or if you are, uh, if you handling more than one million uh, personal information, and because of who you are, and you will be uh, subject to assessment, no matter how many trans uh, data you're going to transfer. And alternatively, uh, if it doesn't, if you does not fall into um, uh, the category above. And if you, we will look at a, look at the amount of the number of the information you transfer. If you transfer, uh, I'm sorry, that is a um, uh, 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 that was a typo. And if you, uh, it's a 10, um, 10, 000, 10 000, yeah, that's correct. 10, if over 10,000 um, uh, personal information, and uh, you will be subject to the assessment. If you transfer um, over the past years, you will, um, transfer over, um, uh, I'm sorry, over 10,000 personal information or ten, uh, uh, over 100,000 personal information or 10,000 sensible uh, personal information. Uh, either way, you will be subject to assessment. So this is uh, the threshold for uh, sec uh, security assessments uh, uh, are. And uh, the last uh, part, Oh, um, the the last uh, um, part I wanna uh, give you a very uh, uh, you know the open ended uh, uh, you know the, the 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 issue that is this what we um, what we discussed been discussed uh, you know the, the you know what what have been deemed as a transfer this is a very interesting topic you know the um, one scenario this is a, a what I have been um, you know the um, 
uh, you know, the, 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 the in practice, what I have been analyzing and uh, studied, you know, so I, I, I put all the scenarios uh, into this one, P, uh, one PowerPoint. And the first scenario is, you know, if one person transfer um, the information cross border to the person outside China, you know, from left to the right, and uh, that, you know, and the PIPL, we call it the cross border transfer. But what if the we do not transfer information? We just allow give the access access to the um to the the, the people outside of China, and uh, will that be deemed as a transfer? Yes, under PIPL, yes. And uh, you know, if we provide the uh you know the 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 uh, the, the, the you know the, the um uh, login number and also the password. And uh, let them to, uh, to, to access it themselves. Yes, the DMS transfer. But what if we transfer um, personal information to a server outside of China and without uh, people to receive that in our own server? Would that be DMS transfer? The law itself does not, uh, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's explicitly, uh, you know, uh, see that. But in the practice, uh, regulators um, uh, deem this as being a cross-border transfer. But um, how about the fourth scenario? You know, so if I bring a, a laptop and the travel to the United States and going back, and would that be deemed a transfer? You know, the theoretically, you know, data has been um, uh, you know bring outside uh, the border, but uh, um, there is uh, uh, the uh, there is no provisions um, to, dis to to discuss this scenario, and of uh, and also the 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 the, the fifth scenario that is uh, if I trans if I transfer some information um, from a, a, you know the uh, going from a cloud or from let's say that send information from a hotmail account to my colleagues in Beijing. You know, would that be demand transfer? And you know, the and the last one that is, uh, what if the information, you know, the the personal information from United States transferred to China, then then I help them to to process to an, 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 an analyze and then and I transfer it back to the United States or maybe to the third country, Japan. Would that deem as a, a, a cross border transfer? You know, have been deemed as an exporter because they're. Um, in all these scenarios, the, the information, you know, there is a, at the one uh, and the one point that information has been um, uh, exported outside China. Would that be a method transfer? So for the last uh, um, three scenarios, um, so, uh, there there's no provisions to discuss about that. But this is a very interesting topic, and uh, as a practitioner, we see that it, you know um, in, in real world. So. Um, so that's all my um, presentation. So uh, I, I think that uh, you know the, uh, I'm gonna pause here and uh, leave for the question if you have. Well, thank you, Ian. That was really fascinating. And gosh, it's so complicated. Um, so I know we have one question sitting in the Q and A, and I encourage others to put their questions there. If you have some questions for him, we'll certainly stick around and talk about this. So um, the question is: Are there any updates on the draft law governing overseas data transfers by the CAC? Yeah, um, I guess you you know you call the draft law. Um, I guess you are referring. Are referring to the the uh, the draft the regulations uh, um, issued on the uh, September 29th, You know the lower the which I discussed that uh, the lower the standard um, for the data cross border transfer and everybody are are, are really are, are waiting for uh, for that because you know the um, end of last month is the deadline for. Uh, SEC, um, you know, the standard contract clause uh, to um, to be filed. So some companies, they um, some companies, you know, the if if uh, if uh, the this draft law to be uh, implemented, and they are exempt from the 
uh, filing the, uh, the the SEC, so they, they don't have to do that. But uh, because the law has still in the draft phase, the under the the uh, the, the current uh, effective the legislation, they need to file this SEC. So they are really in the dilemma. My, my own uh, clients, they are all in this situation. Unfortunately, this this law has not been uh, officially issued. But uh, as far as I understand, that uh, you know the um, that they will be issued, uh, and uh, even though I don't know the final uh, version look like, but uh, I think that uh, the um, e e they will be issued in the near future, and I think that uh, the lot of uh, uh, scenario will be examined and uh, will make the um, it will lift the burden for the data exporters and uh, to uh, to a certain extent, yeah. That yeah. Uh, I think that this is a second question. I, I can read on my screen. Okay. Yeah. Um, what, what information is the hardest to transfer cross border? I'm not sure that uh, uh, what I mean the hardest is uh, uh, how, uh, I, my, my guess that is hardest means that uh, um, it's difficult, uh, you know, the, under the, the, uh, uh, the, 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 the Chinese legislation, it will be difficult to be transferred outside China. I think that the hardest, you know, there are three categories of uh, information, um, you know, are subject to the a stricter uh, requirement. One is personal information, as we discussed. Second, we'll call it called uh, uh, important data, uh, important data. Um, but the scope of important data is still uh, subject to the uh, further um, uh, in interpretation and the legislation. And the, the third category is called a critical or uh, a uh, core, we call it core core data and is uh, is most important uh, in a sensitive information. If you recall it, um, the, the, the hardest one, I think there will be, um, we call it core data or uh, the uh, critical um, core information. And, uh, you know, if that information, you know, properly, and the common sense, you can imagine that even though the um, the law does not provide a very a very clear um, you know the uh, examples, but uh, uh, you as a lay person you can imagine that uh, probably in any country you know that uh, you know the, the 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 this kind of information will be deemed as uh, you know the, the uh, impose a lot of uh, national security um, uh, threat and. Um, and if you be transferred outside of the country, uh, we will have a very serious consequence. And this kind of information are required to be stored within the China and does not require to be transferred outside at all. Uh, you know, you know there there is a you know there is a no way um, you know in, you know for the important data you are you are allowed to um, to to go through the security assessment for for the, for this core. Um, you know the data. You know the even though you uh, you, you you go through the security assessment, uh, you you will not be able to um, to transfer outside China. And uh, I see the third question on the screen. That is uh, any uh, implication implications for how college and university exchange data, such as student, and faculties, and academic data. And uh, uh, I think the you know the generally speaking, you know the they are not restricted, you know, the, um, you know, for, you know, the student and for academic, are not restricted, you know, um, you know, the, at the same time, the, you know, also the government, you know, said that they are, you know, encourage, you know, the uh, academic uh, exchange. And particularly under the new, as mentioned, the draft the regulation that, you know, the lot of the scenario has been examined. So, but if, if when I talk about it, Implementation means that uh, you should be aware of that. You know, the first of all, you know, you you need to look at uh, the volume. I think that the, uh, because the, under the uh, new draft, the the standard really the standard really um, low. You know, um, you, you know the the the, the obviously that uh, late to the burden and a lot of exemptions. So I think the under the most scenario, you know, I mean, you know, right now under the new draft, probably. Uh, over uh, anything below one million will be exempt from the assessment, and uh, all you need to do is maybe just sign a 
uh, standard contract clause, which is uh, a very straightforward stuff. So, so that that means that uh, you know the it's much easier than you thought. But at the same times, when you talk about implementation, but sometimes you need to follow the other. You, you need to satisfy the other uh, 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 obligation and the duties and the PRP. Or for example, you need to provide them a, a notification. You need to get a, either consent, a legal basis. You uh, so this you, you need to take some protection methods. So uh, my recommendation that is you you know the you know you need to do this this little basic you know. If you do some, if you operate in the EU, EU, Europe, and if you um, you want to comply for the GDPR, and uh, you've already done something, you can just uh, do what uh, do what you have done in China. It will be fine. And um, so, so that's my recommendation. You know, so, uh, follow some basic. And another question I think um, is that how did the draft law? Lower the standard for the data exporter. Uh, did they change the definition of personal uh, or important data or something else? Oh, yeah. Um, the, the, what I mean, the low standard, which means that, uh, first of all, they examine the certain um, scenario. And due, due, due to the line restraint, I, I did not get into that detail. First of all, you know, the, they, um, for example, if you um, uh, transfer data um, uh, for the purpose of the HR administration purpose, or if you transfer data for the, for example, for the personal, uh, for the interest, uh, for the interest of the data person, natural person, for example, and uh, I'm sick, I need to uh, go to the hospital and uh, and to the US, and so under this kind of scenario. And uh, you need you you don't have to do, uh, you know the, the the either of the path, you know the security assessment or the SCC, and uh, just you know uh, you know they 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 give you a lot of scenarios for exemption. Second, they 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 the the, the volume you know the make it higher for for example they used to if you tr used to you transfer over um uh, hundred thousand the person information you'll be subject to. A, uh, uh, assessment right now the the you know the, the the number has been reached to the a million which means that anything below one million you need to um you don't have to do the security assessment all you need to do is sign a SCC so this uh, makes the mass majority of the uh, transfer uh, will be examined from the assessment and. Uh, uh, another question is: If a student in China apply for the uh, the, the the U.S. admission and the data transfer from China to the U.S., is that considered cross-border transfer? Yes. What uh, um, should we do in that case? It depends on um you know the, um you know the, how you're gonna um uh, process that information. If you just uh, um a, a processor um um located in the United States, you just, uh, um, you know, the getting the information, you know, without any operation, without uh, any help, and you just, students just uh, provided their own information um, to the U.S. directly, then you uh, fall into that uh, the X um, uh, territory or uh, jurisdiction of breach, you know, fall into that category. Then all you need to do that is uh, you need to um, uh, you know the making you know the, the taking some method and uh, and uh, you know the provide them a notification consent and the making and uh, 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 apply for PRPL some certain obligations and also the government asks you to uh, appoint a, a representative in China yeah and uh, but if you uh, has a uh, um, office, or you have a partners um, located within the China, and help you to collect the information from the natural person, and then go back uh, export that to you. Then you probably um, you know fall into we call it a, a data exporter export. 
And uh, you know, so fall into one of the category I mentioned that in the PowerPoint, that is, uh, uh, they, they either go get a certification or get a security assessment or get an SCC. Um, but uh, most likely that, you know, all you need to do that is, uh, you know, the, 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 the uh, sign SEC depends on the number of um, uh, number of information you're going to transfer um, for uh, uh, within the year um, uh, time frame. And uh, yeah, I think that I have answered all the questions. Yes, you have. Thank you so mm -hmm. much. Um, we really appreciate you getting up early in Beijing to spend time with us today. Um, and thank you everyone for uh, joining us this afternoon for this excellent webinar. Um, we wish very happy holiday and happy new year. We'll see you next year for our next webinar. Um, again, thanks, Ian. This was a really excellent uh, presentation. Um, I had a question if you would make your slides available to uh, us so that we may share them with others. I, I think they'll be on our, our presentation. We like to um, uh, record it and place post it later. So if that's uh, allowable, then we will do that. Um, but uh, this is awesome. Thanks so very much. It answered a lot of our questions. Thank you, thank you, um, the German from uh, China Center. Also, thanks audience for this, uh, 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 you know, the very uh, interesting uh, questions. I'm I'm so happy. I enjoyed th th this webinar very much. Great. Okay, everybody, have a good evening and have a great day, Ian. Okay. Bye bye. Bye.